It's been quite a while, so are you finally ready for this? Power. Quick life update for those who are not following me on Instagram. Guys, I know you might be thinking you've been sitting idle. When are the new videos coming? You've been messaging me on Instagram, via Patreon. Even some of you got my phone number through emails, you name it. So here it goes. In the past couple of months, since I graduated from dentistry, I've been going all in on it. I want to become more and more competent as I go along. So that's a part of me that will always be there. Secondly, I've been traveling quite a bit. To where you might wonder for all the way from switzerland to some countries in the middle east not to forget i bought my first house which is over half a million and guess what we're sitting in it right now the old studio is still being built upstairs and it's been wonderful i've got my own space plenty of room i can do what i want set up the studio exactly the way that i want why it makes everything frictionless now if that wasn't enough to top it all off i bought my dream car even though a lot of wonderful things have been happening and I'm truly grateful for them. There are also some downsides, what you might want. I had to prioritize my time efficiently, so my frequency of going to jiu-jitsu went down. Going to the gym went down. Putting in the time and effort for applied psychology went down. So now I'm at a stage that I need to repick everything up in a great way. Everything's set up and I want to take you guys along with the journey because I know a lot of you have been struggling towards becoming a go-getter. And the moment you do fall off, you don't know how to pick yourself up. Well. Let me assure you, you will pick yourself up, subscribe to the channel, and let's get going with this wonderful video. You are not going to miss any second of it. Watch it until the very end, because after the observation of the law, a lot of great things are coming towards you. Without further ado, enjoy the show. Power. This law is brutally powerful, evil, and unethical. I do not condone using this law to the definition that is given in the book. So let that be your warning in advance. If you wonder why I cover these dark and manipulative topics on a channel that is based on competence, integrity and character, you really, really, really should watch the power intro video first by clicking there. This law consists of two parts which will cover through contemporary media and friends. I've selected the following wonderful scenes for you. Wow. Am I smart enough to do that? Demonstrators are surrounding the National Bank of France. Impossible. Je peux plus rien pour toi. Allow me to be your black swan. Let me do the things that your position precludes you from doing. I'll get right on it. Don't bother, you're fired. Go pack up your things. Don't you ever show your face in this place again. And now I'm firing your firm. Now, by the end of this video, you'll learn this law inside out, arming yourself with the knowledge that you might need in the future. The first part, regarding using scapegoats, is plainly unethical and I do not condone it. But, you do need to be aware of it. Why is that though? Because other people can use this with ease against you. They'll victimize you if you stay unaware of this. Don't be a brat. It's gonna help you clean up your mess. So now I'm the scapegoat. They can take advantage of you if you don't know how the sly and manipulative people in the world operate. By learning these laws, even the unethical ones, you'll arm yourself against the parasites of the world. At least you stand a chance in defending yourself and your loved ones when that inevitable moment comes. In the second part of the video, you'll see how you can use this law ethically, constructively, and in a way that builds up everyone around you. So friends, get ready because it is time for Laws of Power, Law 26. Keep your hands clean. You must seem a paragon of civility and efficiency. Your hands are never soiled by mistakes and nasty deeds. Maintain such a spotless appearance by using others as scapegoats and cat's paws to disguise your involvement. Part 1. Conceal your mistakes. Have a scapegoat around to take the blame. Our good name and reputation depend more on what we conceal than on what we reveal. Everyone makes mistakes, but those who are truly clever manage to hide them and to make sure someone else is blamed. A convenient scapegoat should always be kept around for such moments. As Robert Greene writes, it is wise to separate yourself from the hatchet man at some point, either leaving him dangling in the wind or even making yourself the one to bring him to justice. Not only are you free of involvement in the problem, you can appear as the one who cleaned it up. Robert Greene does give a warning for people who employ this law. You have to be careful not to create a martyr, someone who takes you down with them. Robert explains that you want to be perceived as the poor leader betrayed by the incompetence of those around you. He writes, if the scapegoat appears too weak 
and his punishment too cruel, you may end up the victim of your own device. Sometimes you should find a more powerful scapegoat, one who will elicit less sympathy in the long run. Friends, I genuinely hope that you won't ever betray someone like this. Don't be a coward, high status individuals, in a hierarchy of competence, don't manipulate and use others for their own game. Cowardly and internally weak, fragile people do that. I've already made the case many times for when the laws of power can be used. When you do use the laws of power unethically, you will scar not only the other person for life, but also yourself. You'll become distrusting of the people around you because if you're capable of doing it, if you're capable of using those laws, then what is stopping someone else from using you like that? The first part of the law, like said in the beginning, is unethical in every aspect of it. A man of character and integrity will not use another person as a scapegoat. He'd own up for his own mistakes, no matter how it makes him look. The second part of this law can be used more ethically, and I'll explain how in a second. But you might wonder, Shyam, what are the keys to power? Keys to power. After you make a mistake, it is an all too human response to shift the blame externally, whether that's on a convenient object or a person. At the end of the day, it of course is never you that is at fault. Friends, it takes character to look at your actions and see that you screwed up. It takes another level of character to be able to accurately assess your inadequacies and admit to them. Friends, by going through critical reflection, you better yourself. It is a part of maturing into a greater version of yourself. But in the realm of power, external appearances are put at a premium. And Robert mentions that this profound need to exteriorize one's guilt, to project it on another person or object, has an immense power which the clever know how to harness. It comes so naturally to us to look outwardly rather than inwardly. Using a scapegoat extorts this human flaw and makes us readily accept the scapegoat's guilt. By the way, the use of scapegoats goes far back in human history. Let's answer the following two questions. Where does the term scapegoat come from and what are the functions of scapegoats? The main idea behind the sacrifices is the shifting of guilt and sin to an outside figure. This can be an object, animal or man who is then banished or destroyed. The Hebrews used to take a live goat, hence the term scapegoat, upon whose head the priest would lay both hands while confessing the sins of the children of Israel. And what this does, guys? Symbolically speaking, he's transferring the sins onto the animal. Now there is another way which a scapegoat can be used. In the TV show Suits, Mike Ross is new at the firm and Louis Litt, who oversees the newcomers, wants to send a message to him. So, before I tell you, see if you yourself can spot the other use of a scapegoat right now. I wanted to give you a special welcome from me. Um, amongst other things, I'm sort of the disciplinarian of the associates. Gary, Ms. Pearson wanted me to ask, have you completed the Petrenko filing? Oh, well, my brother was in over the weekend, so I'll get right on it. Well, don't bother, you're fired. Go pack up your things. Don't you ever show your face in this place again. See, I arranged for you to see that. Because... We pay our associates very well, and we provide the opportunity for unlimited advancement, but in return, we expect results. So, did you spot it? If not, replay it once more, because I'm about to tell you. This guy, being the scapegoat, serves as a warning signal to Mike Ross. The message is loud and clear. If you don't work hard, you'll also get fired. Is it fair that he gets fired just to send a message? Perhaps not. Now, to add a layer on top of this, Lois didn't actually fire the guy. Look at this. What are you talking about? Don't play dumb with me, all right? You fired Gary Lipsky in front of Mike Ross. Gary Lipsky works in the mailroom. What? I didn't fire anyone. That's how that the new associates know what's expected of them. In history, people have used close associates as the scapegoat. This is known as the fall of the favorites, and it is tremendously powerful. But why is this? Why is the fall of the favorite so powerful? It is plain and simple. Because people think that the person is the king's favorite. Therefore, the king would do anything to keep him around. If something bad comes to light, they really must have done what they are scapegoated for. Because why else would a king or a person in a position of power just get rid of their favorite? Sneaky, 
manipulative, but certainly effective. However, friends, there is a dark reversal, so stay tuned for that. But first, we have to cover observance in Bastille's Day. Warning. There are humongous spoilers coming for the movie Bastille's Day. Although, I will leave you hanging in the end in case you want to watch it. In this movie, a cop has sent someone to do the dirty work for him. His guy, which is his cat's paw, gives a bomb hidden in a teddy bear to a woman. And the woman is told where she needs to detonate it. She accepts under one condition, there should be no people around. She gets ready and walks towards the location. So Once arrived, she's about to leave the bomb, but the cleaning crew shows up. Now what? Écoute, tu repars là-bas et tu fais ce qu'on avait dit. T'as compris? T'as encore le temps là. Je vais pas le faire. Je vais pas. As she is making this call, one of the protagonists, who is a thief, notices her insecure body language and, like a real thief, preys on her. He steals the bag, not knowing what is inside. The police officer, nonetheless, has succeeded. Even if it's not the right target, he's got the explosion he needed for his bigger plan. What has this got to do with this law? Of course, you can observe that he let someone else do the job, and so he kept his own hands clean. He used the second part of this law, a cat's paw, which we'll get into soon. However, there is much more. C'est pas grave, l'ancien ciel sexe répète. Nous attendons. On va le communiquer. C'était le premier coup. D'ici 36 heures, on va mettre cette ville à genoux. Mind you, in 36 hours, it is Bastille's day. We still do not know why the police officer encouraged a bombing in a city that he's supposed to protect. On voulait la faire péter, on la fait péter. The head of Homeland Security is doing everything he can to find out who is behind it. A witness came forward and identified him as an American. He gets a picture of the thief in his hand since he was the one who was showing up at the explosion. Karen, we go way back if you have any information. If I did, I would tell you. You know that. Commandant Rafi Bernard du groupe d'intervention. Son équipe a géré le siège de l'aéroport du Bourget l'an dernier. Vous avez perdu deux hommes, n'est-ce pas? Je m'en occupe. Appelez un pute la mosquée. Ouais, je m'en occupe. The officer is now using the Muslims from the mosque as the scapegoats for these explosions which they planned themselves. À toutes les unités, on a trouvé des engins explosifs. Je répète. This riles up all kinds of parties in the city. Encore une fois, ce sont les étrangers et leur idéologie barbare. The benefit for him is people will be blinded by what he has set up, as much as the scapegoats protest. Who believes them? Je vois pas pourquoi la police continue nous harceler alors qu'on y est pour rien. Nous tout ce qu'on cherche, c'est vivre en paix. The book explains that it's often wise to choose the most innocent victim as a sacrificial goat. But why, you might wonder? The answer is plain and simple. They will not be powerful enough to fight you. The more they naively protest, the more it will be a sign of their guilt. Later in the movie, this woman finds out that there is a rogue officer operating in the police force and she goes on to tell all of this to the head of Homeland Security. Victor, you have a terrorist conspiracy in the heart of the police force. The police officer is after monetary gain. He wants money to set himself up for life. You're d'accord? Because we'll have to finish our service in 2 hours. We'll be tranquil for the bon. Victor, you have a terrorist conspiracy in the heart of the police force. The mosque was a setup. There's something going on. You have evidence? I have a witness. But can you get them into safe custody? Witness handover needs to be off the books. Call him. I arrange your pickup. Tell him the safe word is Mike Alpha. Thank you, Victor. Safe word, Mike Alpha. Thank you for coming to me. You owe me dinner. Square Salingrad, Aubervilliers. Dès que vous les avez, vous les emmenez dans un coin tranquille et puis débarrassez-vous-en. Demonstrators are surrounding the National Bank of France. Il y a 200 années, le peuple s'est révolté contre ses oppresseurs. Ensemble, on se soulèvera de nouveau Le gouvernement a autorisé le recours au niveau maximum de sécurité. Il va être héliporté vers la banque pour en assurer l'intégrité depuis l'intérieur. Préparez-vous
C'est fait Oui, c'est fait. Tous les codes sont en train d'être changés. Pour le réservateur, le système interbancaire Oui, à partir de 10h, le groupe d'intervention aura un contrôle absolu. Maintenant. J'ai notre exagarme. Quelle m'a coupé. Focalise-toi. On n'est pas là pour l'or. Viens, il y en a dix fois plus ici. Ouais. On arrête tout, d'accord Disparaît. C'est trop tard J'ai 500 000 euros dans la poche. Je sors de cette banque et tu me fais quitter le pays. Impossible. Je peux plus rien pour toi. Impossible. Je peux plus rien pour toi. Petit fonctionnaire de merde Parce que tu te crois à l'abri dans ton petit bureau Si je plonge, tu plonges avec moi, d'accord Quoi Ça vient de tomber. Il semblerait qu'il y ait des policiers corrompus dans la banque. Est-ce qu'il fait, elle est devenue dingue C'est confirmé, c'est notre poseur de bombes. Non, non, gardez le commandant en joue. Descendez-le. Oui, on est huit Interpretation. As you saw, the head of Homeland Security was the mastermind behind all of it himself. When shit hit the fan for him, he used his comrade as a scapegoat. He kept his hands clean and even got publicly rewarded for it. Director Gamieux has been praised for his work bringing down the gang of corrupt police officers. Their suspected bomber is still at large and police are watching all ports and airports, asking the public to remain vigilant. Part 2. Make use of the cat spa. If there is something unpleasant or unpopular that needs to be done, it is far too risky for you to do the work yourself. You need a cat spa, someone who does the dirty, dangerous work for you. We see a great example of this in Suits. Allow me to be your black swan. Let me do the things that your position precludes you from doing. The dark choices, the distasteful wet work. Louis, I appreciate your offer, I do. But Look, I swear it'll never come back to you. I didn't say I was afraid to get caught. I said I don't want to operate that way. Now, if you'll excuse me. Because Harvey chose to handcuff me. Lewis, I'm not taking you off this case. But I am taking the handcuffs off. Wait, are you saying that I have your blessing to go to the board and convince them to ditch Ava Hassington? I'm not saying anything. Got it. This conversation never happened. Good night, Lewis. In the realm of power, there will always be dirty tasks needed to be done in order to keep you on the throne. A king or queen cannot be seen doing these tasks because they will taint their name. Their hands need to be clean. And guess what? It is here where they use the cat spot. You might think kings and queens are of the past, so how does this apply in the modern era? Well, I'm glad you asked. There is another, even better example in Suits, which also has another law embedded in it as well. Harvey Specter tries to fire the new CEO of a company he is heavily invested in. You can get him started on the new deal right away. New deal? Yeah. I have found a buyer willing to spend $200 million. Where are you moving manufacturing? Well, that's the beauty of it. We move overseas, we save ourselves a bundle. Upfront payout while retaining the name and maintaining cash flow over time. That's genius. Exactly. Yeah, we'll take care of everything. Jesus, I knew he was cheap. I didn't realize he was an idiot. Look, I made a bet that this company would grow and my billables would grow with it. We're holding a pair of aces and this asshole is trying to fold. So? You're going to go through those bylaws and you're going to find me a way to get rid of Robert Stensland. Well, Harvey is forced to back off from Stensland, the new CEO, but you know Harvey. He won't back off. You looked at the bylaws for a tactical reason, and I want to know what it is. I want him out. That is not your call. You fail, we'll get fired. He moves overseas, our billables will be gone in five years anyway. Better five years than nothing. You are a senior partner. You are not a gunslinger anymore. Back off Stenslin and close the deal. I need you to prepare the draft CEO candidate speech for Thursday. Well, I thought you were supposed to back off. Yeah, I'm supposed to do a lot of things. Long story short, Harvey planned and got outsmarted by the CEO and their entire firm got fired. Robert? You know, I have to admit, I almost didn't see it coming. It's the delay in the due diligence. It just didn't smell right. So since I'm still within my rights to move a board meeting, I did. I was voted in today at noon. And now I'm firing your firm. Now, how does Jessica, who is the managing partner, handle a situation like this? Friends, that's where this law comes in. 
observe the genius of Jessica Pearson. If you hadn't gone to Stenzel behind my back, this wouldn't have happened. Lewis, go to Stenzel and repair the relationship. Say what you have to. Call it a misunderstanding. Promise Harvey is no longer involved. Consider it done. Wait a second. Lewis didn't go to Stenzel behind my back. You sent him there to hedge your bets. Either Stenzel's out and we double our billings, or you have plausible deniability and he stays with the firm. You fail, we'll get fired. Back off Stenzlin and close the deal. Wow. Am I smart enough to do that? If I win, I look great. If Lewis wins, he looks great. Either way, you look great. You mean the firm looks great. As you saw, Jessica covered her own ass by sending two of her own agents to lay her bets. If Harvey succeeds, she wins. If Harvey fails, then she has her backup plan, Lewis lit, to make it all good, and she's back at where she started. Also, if Harvey fails, she can claim that Harvey acted on his own will and she's got plausible deniability, and all will stay the same. She used both Harvey and Lewis, who have a pissing contest between them, as a cat's paw to advance her own agenda. Robert writes, the easiest and most effective way to use a cat's paw is often to plant information with him that he will then spread to your primary target. False or planted information is a powerful tool, especially if spread by a dupe whom no one suspects. You will find it very easy to play innocent and disguise yourself as the source. Unlike the many examples in the 48 Laws of Power, the suit scenes we just covered is a more ethical use of it. Jessica doesn't just do it to advance her own agenda. Here's how she rationalizes it. You look great. You mean the firm looks great. Harvey, what I've been trying to get into your head is that you bought in. You are the firm. Now friends, we need to think. I'm already giving you information and you're taking it in, but I want you to try to make the scenario in that scene more ethical. Imagine you come into a similar situation, perhaps in your own business. You can still use that same tactic and also increase your bond with your people. Now my question to you is how would you do it? Just think about how can you do that when you are quote unquote using them beyond their own knowledge. It's very simple. You sit them down and you tell the tactic in advance. The downside is, they might screw up. Asshole, how you messed up the carpet? It wasn't my fault. If they do, you find someone else who can do the job in future endeavors. Friends, in this way it becomes more ethical. Your people won't feel used and you all get closer towards advancing to the common goal. By you trusting them, they'll repay that trust in you. They'll buy into you as a leader. You show solutions and use tactics and strategies they didn't see as possible. You make them become better people. You increase their competence, their knowledge base, and you all share in the joy and advance towards that common goal. What is that goal in this case? Advancing the firm, business, or cause you all represent. Robert Green's take is a little less ethical on this. He explains you need to find these quote-unquote dupes outside your immediate circle. There are people who enjoy doing your favors, especially if you throw them a bone or two in exchange. He writes, but as they accomplish tasks that may seem to them innocent enough, or at least completely justified, they're actually clearing the field for you. Spreading the information you feed them, undermining people they do not realize are your rivals, inadvertently furthering your cause, dirtying their hands while yours remain spotless. So friends, remember the cat's paw is good for two things. First, to save appearances, as Jessica did. Second, to save energy and effort. You can do this by allying yourself with a superior force with whom you have common enemies and let them fight your battles for you. Reversal of the law. I don't like the use of scapegoats. I do see its efficacy nonetheless. Friends, at the end of the day, you have to decide what kind of human being you want to be. How far are you willing to go to fulfill that sense of need to appear powerful and almighty to the world? Just see how politicians live their life. Absolutely awful. However, if you do decide to use it, do it with extreme caution and delicacy. Because once you get exposed, you'll be seen as the manipulator and the puppet master. From that moment onwards, you'll be doubted for everything and be blamed for things and misfortunes that you had nothing to do with. As for the following part, think of the information that recently got exposed about the liver king. Robert Green writes, Finally, 
There are moments when it's advantageous to not disguise your involvement or responsibility, but rather to take the blame yourself for some mistake. If you have power and are secure in it, you should sometimes play the penitent. With a sorrowful look, you should ask for forgiveness from those weaker than you. It is the ploy of the king who makes a show of his own sacrifices for the good of the people. Friends, in the meanwhile, you can watch the most recent uploaded video of the channel over here. And I also want you to watch this video here. Trust me, you do not want to miss out on that.